Welcome. And it looks like more of you are subscribing to the channel, so the first thing I want to say is thanks. I hope these tips are working for you, even when I'm being a little silly. Second, tell a friend or a coworker, because if you don't tell them, they're just going to ask you how to do it. And third, let's go to the beach. So we're at the beach today in a little feature that I think I'm going to call software at the beach, because that just makes all kinds of sense. And today we're going to specifically take a look at the Excel program and even more specifically at finding values in a range of data. Now you can find the minimum value using the min function or you can use max to find the largest value in the range. But what about values in between? What if you want the second largest or the third smallest item in your data range? Well, in this video, we're going to look at a few functions that will help you do just that. You can find the top values, bottom values, and really anything in between. So stick around for a few minutes and I'll show you how to find values in a range of data in Microsoft Excel at the beach. So let's start by finding the largest or smallest items in our data set. Now, earlier I mentioned that you can use min or max to find the largest or smallest item in your data set, but what if you want the first or second largest or the third or fourth smallest in that set? Well, we'll start with a function called large. Equals to let the program know we are typing a formula and then the word large as our function name. We'll open the paren to start that collection process and then select all the numbers in our data range. After selecting the range, then I'll need to separate the range from the number that I'm looking for with a comma. After typing the comma, I can then type in the one that I'm looking for. So in this case, I'm looking for the largest value in this range, and that would be number one. After typing the one, I'll close the paren, and when I press enter, it finds the $130,000 value next to region 14. I can also find the second or third largest item just by going back and editing the formula. So in this case, I'll go back to the $130,000, I'll double click to edit, and then I'll change the one to the number three. And this will help me to find the third largest value in this data set. In this case, it comes up with the $78,000 value next to region 19. Its companion function is called small and does exactly the same thing except in reverse. If I'd like to find something in the middle of that data, I can use another function called median. And to create the function, it's equal sign and then the name of the function, median. I'll open the paren to start that collection process and then I'll select all of my data in the range. Now I could drag like I did in the first couple of formulas, but in this case, I'm going to use a handy keyboard shortcut, the control shift and then down arrow on my keyboard to select everything within the contiguous range of data. So I'll close the paren and when I press enter, it finds the $28,000 value that is next to region 13. So top values, bottom values, and now something right in the middle. Sometimes I'd like to find out if a number is repeated, which one occurs the most often. So I can use another function called mode. And to use the mode function, I type in the equal sign, the word mode. And when I do, you'll notice that you have a couple of options for using the mode function. In this case, I'm only going to use the simple mode function. 
open the paren and then select my data range using the keyboard shortcut. I'll close the paren, press enter, and it then displays 21,000 which can be found next to region number 7 and next to region number 20. Our last function for searching a data set involves ranking all of the numbers in your data set. Then you can choose the first or second largest or maybe the fourth largest and the second largest so you get options. To create the rank function you'll notice that I'm located next to the first cell that I want to do the analysis on because the rank function then has to be copied down next to all of the numbers. So I'll start that once again with our handy equal sign and then the name of the function which is rank. I'll open that paren to start collecting and then instead of selecting the range I'll just select the number to the left that I want to rank. After selecting the number then I'll type a comma to s separate the number I'm ranking from the range that I'm ranking it against. And the rank function is one of the few functions where you actually include the item you are analyzing in the array that you're doing the analysis against. So I'll start by clicking the 36,000 in M5 and then dragging all the way down to the bottom of the range. And yes, I could have used that keystroke if I wanted to. After selecting the range, I then type in another comma because this is a three-part function. And my last option here is to show the result in a ascending or descending order. And if I use the number one, it's ascending. But in this case, I'll use the zero to get the result in a descending order. So I'll select the parenthesis, type that in. And when I press enter, I'm then notified by the result that the $36,000 figure is the fifth largest item in this range of data. I'd like to take that result and copy it down to the other cells. So I can single click the cell, grab the small fill handle here in the bottom right corner and drag down all the way. When I let go, it then ranks all of the items in column M against all of the other items in column M. Now, the one problem I'm going to have with this results uh, because I have failed to lock the range. So to demonstrate that, I'll just go back to my 36,000 formula here in column N and double click to edit. You'll notice that it compares the M5 value against all the values from M5 to M25. But if I move further down in the range, for example, down to the $130,000 value and double click, you'll notice that while it does continue to look at the cell to the left of it, the range has now adjusted so it's only looking at M18 to M38. So this problem has to be addressed by dollar sign. So I'll escape out of the cell, move back up to my first formula, and then double click to edit. Now, I'll edit this by locking the range M5 to M25, and I can do that with dollar signs, which I can type in or I can use a, key, a keyboard shortcut to accomplish this. I'll select the M5 to M25, and then press the F4 key on my keyboard. This then puts dollar signs around the entire range. Now, if you're using a laptop, you may need to use the function key and then F4 depending upon how your laptop is configured. When I tap the F4 key the first time, you'll notice that the dollar signs appear around the column letter as well as the row numbers. So if I wanted to drag this formula to the right, the range M5 to M25 would remain there no matter how far to the right or down I drag it. If I press the F4 again, it now only locks the rows, which is actually appropriate for the data that I'm doing the analysis on in this example. 
And if I press it one more time, it adds the dollar signs to the column, which means that I could drag this formula to the right and the range will always look at M. But if I do drag it down, then that range is going to start adjusting and I'm going to continue to have problems. If I tap the F4 key one more time, the entire for, uh, range in the formula is now uh, relative, which is basically back to the same problem that I had in the first place. So I'll tap F4, I'll lock up all of it, and when I press enter, I get the same result. But now, as I drag the formula down, you'll notice that the ranks change, because now I am only examining the number to the left from the existing range of M5 to M25. So I'll continue to copy that down. Now we can identify the fourth largest or the 11th largest item in that range if we like to find that. Now one note about using the rank function is that it does not work very well with a tie. So for example, you'll see that I have a couple of repeating values of $21,000 in region 7 and in region 20 in which case they are both 17, so there is no 18 to be seen in that ranking range. But that's just a small price to pay when you have a, a lot of numbers and you need to find the various ranked numbers in a data set. So, I hope you found that helpful. And, it sure beats the heck out of sorting a bunch of data to find what you're looking for, huh? So, I know most of you are watching these videos to help you with things at work. So, I'm going to get out of here and let you enjoy a couple of minutes of chill at the beach. Until our next video, I'm Wayne. Oh yeah, and we're definitely doing this again. <laughs>